Star Wars 7x7 episode 1784. Well, I was just talking about this on Friday, and wouldn't you know it, it's come to pass. The Vanity Fair Star Wars issue has been revealed. Let's start talking about it. Here we go. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And you know, it was just May 17th, last Friday, six days ago, when I did an episode for resetting the media calendar for The Rise of Skywalker. And one of the first things I talked about was the Vanity Fair issue and predicted that it would come out May 28th or shortly thereafter. Well, I was kind of right about that. The official announcement for the print issue is that it is hitting newsstands in New York and Los Angeles on May 30th and arriving on newsstands in the rest of the country on June 4th, on or by June 4th. But that's just the physical print issue. The digital one, well, that I did not talk about. <laughs> And I'm actually surprised to discover that it's been released a full week early compared to when the actual physical article is hitting newsstands. It came out yesterday by Lev Grossman and a whole bunch of side stories by Joanna Robinson. And so let's talk about the main highlights of those stories. In particular, what I'm thinking about is A, the roles of Carrie Russell, Richard E. Grant, and Naomi Ackie, and B, what this tells us, what the new information tells us about the Rise of Skywalker trailer, what new light it sheds on the scenes that we've seen already. First of all, I can tell you that we were all wrong about that desert planet. It's not Jeddah, it's not Tatooine, it's not Jakku, it's another planet entirely called Pasana, P-A-S-A-A-N-A. -A -A -A. And here's one of the really intriguing things about it, I think. There's a note in one of the side stories from Joanna Robinson that says that Pasana is home to a new alien species called the Aki Aki, the A-K-I-A-K-I, but also it's home to a breed of horse-like creatures called Orbaks, O-R-B-A-K-S. Now, the reason why this is fascinating is because there is a shot of Finn and Naomi Aki's character, Jenna, riding these horses, and it looks like they're in that grasslands area that we see at the end of the Rise of Skywalker teaser, where Rey and company are walking to the edge of a cliff and seeing that gigantic piece of the Death Star. So we've all been operating under the presumption that because the way Star Wars works, because it's generally like one climate per planet, yeah, 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 you know, all of that stuff. We've been thinking that this is a separate planet, but it may not be the case. It may be, in fact, that the desert scenes we've seen and these grassland scenes are happening on the same planet. And that's kind of significant, I would say. Of course, we don't yet know where Pasana is in the galaxy, but Outer Rim seems like a pretty promising <laughs> bet. And we know that the First Order is on Pasana, and seemingly in both the Grasslands locations and the Desert locations, because the caption for the photo of Finn and Janna on their horses, or Orbacks, says that they are facing down the mechanized forces of the First Order. Now that could just be, you know, fun caption writing, and it's certainly accurate as far as depicting the First Order as being mechanized, right? Mechanized? But, yeah, hard to say for sure. However, we do know that the First Order is on Pasana because we've seen their, you know, tread speeders and what appear to be jump troopers flying around in that one scene that we saw in the trailer. And additionally, we now know that the Knights of Ren are not only going to appear in the movie, but that they are on Pasana as well. There is a photo of the Knights of Ren and a behind the scenes shot of them in the desert. So that's pretty intriguing. There's nothing in the article about whether Kylo Ren is actually with them. And I would remind all of us, including me, that the way that the footage in the trailer is cut. We can't necessarily tell whether that's Kylo Ren in that particular TIE fighter we see in there. And even though there was a shot, a still photo of Adam Driver in the cockpit of a fighter in the uh, photos that were shown at the Rise of Skywalker panel at Celebration Chicago, 
there's still a lot of iffy stuff about that. So whether he himself is on Pasana, well, that still seems to be open to debate. And then there's the other planet that we are shown in the Rise of Skywalker trailer. It looks like a little bit of a snowy planet, and that is in fact what it is. It's a snow-dusted world called Kijimi. That's how it's described in the article, and Kijimi is K-I-J-I-M-I, -I -I, in case you're playing along at home. Kijimi is going to have a location called the Thieves' Quarter, that's thief plural, and one person that we will meet there is Carrie Russell's character, whose name is Zori Bliss, and she is a scoundrel of some kind. The only thing that she had let slip about her character was that she had a very cool costume, and now we actually get to see that costume in full in the Vanity Fair stories, and yeah, it is pretty darn cool. But what her purpose is in this movie, well, that has yet to be revealed. And let's talk about Richard E. Grant and Naomi Aki as well and their characters. We'll get to that in just a moment. I'm gonna take a quick break and then we'll do it. Stay tuned. Hey there. If you're enjoying all the coverage that I'm bringing you from Star Wars Celebration and what I do every single day for you at Star Wars 7x7, I hope you'll consider putting something in the tip jar at patreon.com slash sw7x7. $1, 327, 501 or more. Honestly, every little bit helps and every little bit is just as exciting as every other little bit. Please consider supporting me in the work of delivering Star Wars stories and interviews to you on a daily basis at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. All right, so in addition to Carrie Russell's character, Zori Bliss, we also have Richard E. Grant playing, surprise, surprise, a First Order baddie by the name of Allegiant General Pride. That's Pride with a Y. And whether... He is, well, you know, I hear Allegiant and it makes me think of Allied, and so you kind of wonder if it's, you know, like a separate set of First Order forces or something like that, but I don't really think that's the case. Ultimately, if you're going to throw something like Allegiant in front of General, that makes you think it's probably a higher level title, and so he seems like he could be General Hux's boss. At least that's what I would imagine to be the case, and certainly he seems to project more of a seniority, and even the costume that he wears in the photo that they shared from the Vanity Fair articles, Annie Leibovitz again providing some beautiful images. The photo shows him in an outfit that's definitely not so rigorously military, it's got more of a sashy kind of feel to it, even though it is still all black and, say, very first order in its way, but it seems almost more dress uniform, more formal-like, if you will, so I'm thinking that he's probably a bigger muckety-muck than General Hux is. And, you know, I'm sure Kylo Ren <laughs> doesn't have much love for General Hux anyway, so I'm sure he wouldn't mind seeing Hux being lower on the rungs of power, comparatively speaking. And as far as Naomi Aki's character goes, well, you know, we gotta close the loop and simply say that still she's not allowed to talk about her character at all, other than to just give the first name, which may be the only name, maybe not be the only name, who knows? And ultimately, it's just gonna continue to fuel speculation that she is somehow related to another Star Wars character, obviously. Lando Calrissian is the one that's been talked about the most. So... Yeah, we're just going to continue to wonder about that and not giving us any more information will just <laughs> continue to add fuel to that fire. But, you know, such is life. That's what we're <laughs> going to do. You know, that's that's just part of the, the fan life awaiting until this sucker comes out. Anyway, um, yeah, and actually we are, what, do the math, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We're less than seven months away, which is pretty amazing. And we're going to talk more about the in-depth reveals in the article and the side articles in the next couple of episodes. But I think that is going to do it for now, for the main reveals and how they tie in to the Rise of Skywalker trailer and the footage that we've already seen. And thus, that'll do it for this episode as well. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.